do, 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 do. I need to find like intro music. Poor man's poison. I need to reach out to them and see if they'll do some intro music. Okay. Jerome Powell says that inflation is much too high and the Fed will take necessary steps to address it. We've talked about this numerous times, but I think it's something you guys really need to pay attention to because they're starting to panic. There's more and more articles coming out about the Fed thinking they need to make moves to curtail the inflation that's taking place. And I think because they foresee how bad it's getting ready to get. Quote, the labor market is very strong and inflation is much too high and we will take the necessary steps to ensure a return to price stability. In particular, if we conclude that it is appropriate to move more aggressively by raising the federal funds rate by more than 25 basis points at a meeting or meetings, we will do so. And if we determine that we need to tighten beyond common measures of neutral and into a more restrictive stance, we will do that as well. The sudden policy tightening comes with inflation as measured by the consumer price index running at 7.9% on a 12-month basis. The Fed prefers that to be at a 2% number. Powell ascribed much of the pressures coming from pandemic-specific factors. In particular, escalated demand for goods over services that supply could not meet. He conceded that Fed officials widely underestimated how long those pressures would last. Remember when I said yesterday, the government is not good at estimating numbers. Um, While those aggravating factors have persisted, the Fed and Congress provided more than $10 trillion in fiscal and monetary stimulus. Provided. Provided? They didn't provide shit. They just gave you back your own money. And $10 trillion, where the fuck did that number come from? Because as far as the economic stimulus checks that went to Americans, that only totaled $857 billion. So $10 trillion? I'd be interested to see the rest of that money. Powell said he continues to believe that inflation will drift back to the Fed's target, but it's time for the historically easy policies to end. Powell also addressed the Russian invasion of Ukraine, saying it is adding to the supply chain and inflation pressures. Well, of course it's adding to the supply chain pressures. You're preventing us from buying anything from them. Under normal circumstances, the Fed generally would look through those types of events and not alter policy. However, with the outcome unclear, he said policymakers have to be wary of the situation. We're wary of policymakers. Biden's imminent Iran nuclear deal is savaged by the by Israel and the GOP. The United States is trying to return to the 2015 nuclear deal with Iran, and it could have happened as soon as this week, but not because Israel and the United States, not if Israel and the United States have anything to say about it. The State Department said the deal could be reached within days. Israel's Prime Minister, Naftali Bennett, said he was concerned about the nuclear deal's pending return, which would include removing Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps from the U.S. and Israeli list of terrorist groups. This is not just an Israeli problem. Other countries, allies of the United States and the region, face this organization day in and day out. Even now, the IRGC terrorist organization is trying to murder certain Israelis and Americans around the world. Unfortunately, there is still determination to sign the nuclear deal with Iran at almost any cost, including saying that the world's largest terrorist organization is not a terrorist organization. This is too high a price. Kevin McCarthy said, America gets nothing in Biden's Iran deal. No serious system to check if the Iranian regime is cheating. No leverage over expanded trade with Russia and China. No safeguards against Iranian terrorism, and nothing to help the Iranian people. The United States warns companies to stay on guard for possible Russian cyber attacks. The White House is warning companies that Russia could be planning to launch cyber attacks against crucial infrastructure. 
The U.S. has previously warned about the Russian government's capabilities to digitally attack the United States companies, but President Biden reiterated the message yesterday, saying in a statement that evolving intelligence showed Russia is exploring options for potential cyber attacks. The potential attacks would be in response to U.S. sanctions against Russia over its invasion of Ukraine, the White House said. Because, you know, financially waging war against another country that did nothing to you doesn't have any consequences or anything, right? Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technology, Ann Neuberger, called for companies to secure their systems, including implementing multi-factor authentication, patching systems against known vulnerabilities, backing up data, running drills, and engaging with federal authorities before a cyber attack happens. Cyber attack happens. How does one know before a cyber attack happens to engage with the federal authorities? Just wondering. Uh, Newberger said that the administration held classified briefings with companies last week based on preparatory activity that U.S. intelligence is picking up from Russia, but she said the U.S. doesn't see a specific cyber attack approaching. Keep in mind that the colonial pipeline attack led to gas shortages on the East Coast in May of 2021, followed by an attack on the meat processor, JBS, supposedly... Those attacks came from criminals connected to Russia, although, to my knowledge, no proof that there were any actual ties to Russia have been presented to anyone. Um, this story is really cool. Um, I'm actually really interested in this, so I'm sharing it with you guys. So there is a brain implant that allows patients with advanced ALS to communicate. Lou Gehrig's disease, which is also known as ALS, is a nightmare in its advanced form, leaving patients without any means of communicating their needs and wishes, unable to move a single muscle, even to open your eyes, completely locked into your own body, yet fully conscious and aware. A new brain implant has allowed a 34-year-old locked-in ALS patient to regain his ability to communicate with family and doctors. Two microchip implants inserted into the brain of the German patient allowed him to form words and even full sentences using nothing but mental impulses. It shows you can write sentences with the brain even if you are completely paralyzed without any eye movement or other muscles to communicate. Um, That was quoted by the lead researcher Niels Burbaumer. He's the director of the Institute of Medical Psychology and Behavioral Neurobiology at the University of Tübingen in Germany. Um, Tübingen, Tübingen, whatever. The patient was diagnosed in August of 2015 with a fast-progressing form of ALS. By the end of 2015, he'd lost the ability to talk and walk. The next year, he was placed on a ventilator because he couldn't move his muscles to draw breath. At first, he could communicate using an eye tracking device, which used his eye movements to put together words and sentences, but by August of 2017, he had lost the ability to fix his gaze. The man's family gave permission to have the implants, each a little more than a tenth of a square inch, placed inside of his motor cortex, which is the part of the brain that's responsible for movement. Each implant has 64 needle-like electrodes that detect neural signals. The man learned to generate brain activity by telling his body to move, even though it no longer can. The implants pick up that brain activity and feed it into a computer as a yes-no signal. A spelling program reads the letters of the alphabet aloud, and the man selects specific letters using his brain waves. The process is slow. It's about a letter a minute but it has allowed the patient to regain some communication with those around him. The tech involved in this interface is still very expensive. It requires a lot of time and dedication. The wireless device named Ability could eventually enable speech decoding directly from the brain as the patient imagines speaking, leading to more natural communication. I just thought that this was really fascinating for two things. Number one, I cannot imagine if I had a disease like Lou Gehrig's disease, being fully conscious and aware 
but trapped inside of your body and unable to communicate or move or do anything like that would, man, I feel for anybody who has to go through that or experience that. The second thing that I find really fascinating is that, you know, as tech advances, we, I, I, so a couple things, like the fact that your brain is still, I mean, it's a, a tissue, a muscle that works and it's the only one unaffected. Like, I think that that, well, I say unaffected, I'm, I'm not a fucking neurobiologist, but um, I think it's really cool at, that as technology advances, we could prolong life in this way. And then at the same time, I ask this a lot of times when we discuss some of these science things, should we, you know, is this us messing with things that we shouldn't or, you know, I don't know. I think it's interesting. I thought I would share that with you guys. It's a very cool technology. Um, Workers go on strike at a California refinery owned by Chevron. More than 500 workers at a Chevron refinery in the San Francisco Bay Area went on strike early Monday in a contract dispute. The United Steelworkers Union said in an email that the strike affecting the refinery in the city of Richmond began at 12.01 a.m. It came after workers voted down Chevron's most recent contract offer and that Chevron refused to return to the bargaining table. Chevron said in a statement Sunday night that it has negotiated with the union for months and believes that a contract offered by the company was fair and addressed union concerns. The company said that refinery operations will continue despite the strike and that it does not anticipate any supply chain issues. If the strike were to shut down the refinery, that could negatively affect gasoline prices in California, which has the highest regular gas price in the nation at $5.86 per gallon. The union said it had negotiated a national agreement for oil workers on wages and working conditions, but about a two about 200 individual bargaining units still had to negotiate local issues. Chevron said that the union's demands exceeded what the company believes to be a reasonable and moved beyond what was agreed to as part of the national pattern of bargaining agreement. I'm curious, I, the people who do listen to this show, um, what your all's thoughts are on unions. Is that something that, you know, served its purpose when they were implemented and now they're abused? Or is that something that you think we should maintain, have more of? I'm curious to hear your all's thoughts on unions. I go back and forth sometimes. Um, so I'd, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about this. Saudi Arabia says it will not bear any responsibility for oil shortages after a Houthi attack. The largest oil exporter in the world declares that it will not bear any responsibility for shortages in oil supplies to global markets in light of the attacks on its oil facilities from the Iranian-backed terrorist Houthi militias. If you remember, Joe Biden lifted its terrorist designation for Houthis in Yemen in February of 2021, right after he took office. U.S.-Saudi tensions have already risen amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine, as Saudi leaders have largely resisted calls to increase supply to stabilize energy markets and offset embargoed Russian oil. Saudi Arabia's energy ministry said Sunday that drones and missile strikes hit a petroleum products distribution terminal, a natural gas plant, and a refinery, among other facilities owned by the state-run petroleum giant Aramco. Biden has reportedly been looking to reset relations with Mohammed bin Salman following multiple refused calls and as it reorients foreign policy to exert maximum pressure on Vladimir Putin. The U.S. has sent a significant number of Patriot anti-missile interceptors to Saudi Arabia in the recent weeks, following a request from Riyadh to ensure it has the defensive supplies to counter Houthi attacks. So that is everything yesterday, this morning. I love you guys so much. I hope you had a wonderful Tuesday and I will see you guys tomorrow.